Welcome to Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time Part 43. This is a compilation video containing some very useful tips, as does the rest of the series. And the reason that I make these compilation videos is usually because I'm otherwise engaged and can't make a video from scratch. Yesterday I spent the afternoon at York Hospital, and it was of course impossible to make a video there. A very strange coincidence occurred. On the news, when I got back, I noticed that King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer. And it also said on the news that his treatment starts tomorrow. And I've just started mine by taking a tablet, which will reduce my testosterone down to a very low level. Then I'm going to have some radiotherapy that I didn't really want. I requested something called brachytherapy, which is a bit different. But I'm told by the experts that I can't have that because of the position of the cancer in my prostate. The irony of it all is King Charles gets his treatment tomorrow, but then again he is the king and I'm not. And I was diagnosed with prostate cancer almost two years ago, and so far I've just had two biopsies. That's all the treatment I've had. In my opinion it's been a bit of a joke with the NHS, but I'm not going to go into detail about that. Instead I'm going to tell you about this small engine that I'm working on. It is a Bassett Loke twin-cylinder steam engine built into a steam plant. And the whole thing, as is often the case, is a mess. I'm going to fix it. I kept looking at it in a corner of my workshop with its science fiction soldering. It looks like something out of a science fiction horror film. So I thought, well, I'll just remove that solder because it's really bothering me. I used this very small blowtorch, which was worse than useless, in the end I took it into the outer part of the workshop and used my proper blowtorch to melt the solder, brush it away so I could free off the connections to underneath the baseboard. All the components of this steam plant are crudely mounted on a piece of aluminium which is screwed onto a piece of wood, so I'll be putting that in the bin. But before I applied some common sense and took the whole plant into the outer part of the workshop I thought I would just cremate a paintbrush. At least this mini blowtorch got rid of some of the solder, but it would have taken far too long to do it this way. The pipe from the boiler was also soldered to the engine pipe, and I could see that it was a nut that was between the two pipes, so I assumed that if I warmed up the solder with this mini blowtorch, I'd be able to undo the nut. And indeed, once the solder was melted, the nut did move. So I started undoing the nut and then I realised that this nut was damaged, that's why it had been soldered, because the entire side of the nut was cracked. You can see this clearly in the clip that's currently on screen. Trying to undo the nut very carefully was a complete waste of time, so I just used a large pair of pliers and very quickly unscrewed the nut from the engine's piping. So eventually the engine was separated from the baseboard and here it is on the bench. The first thing to do, flood it with oil. It's anybody's guess how long it was since this engine last ran, so treating the engine to a copious amount of machine oil is a good idea at this stage. I'm trying not to miss anything out and the oil's going everywhere, which is not a problem because eventually this engine will either go in the bin or it will go into a bath of cellulose thinners, which is known as lacquer thinner in the USA. And the reason that the engine is going to go into a bath of lacquer thinner, or cellulose thinners as it's known in the UK, is to remove all the paint. It looks like it's been painted with a tar brush, but first of all, I need to make sure the engine works, because if it's beyond economical repair, it's really not worth working on. I'm not a clairvoyant, but I did know that this was not going to work. I knew in advance it was not going to work just because of the way it was painted. Look, a red flywheel, white round the outer edges, nice red ends to the cylinders, and it gets worse. The generator that was mounted on the baseboard is painted bright yellow and bright red. So anyway, back to the engine. It doesn't work at all. The engine's timing is nowhere near where it should be, so I'm putting this right. And just for the record, the larger lobe of the eccentric should always be at the 90 degree position relative to the crank pin. And on a twin cylinder steam engine like this one, the eccentric on the other side should also be at 90 degrees to the crank pin, but don't forget that needs to be 90 degrees in the opposite direction to the other crank pin. Oddly enough, on this side, I couldn't find the eccentric adjustment. I wasn't thinking. I removed the eccentric strap to realise there was no eccentric. The eccentric is part of the flywheel. Now, that's a new one on me. How clever is that? So whilst being a little bit embarrassed by being stupid and I should have known better, I refitted the eccentric strap, 
then slackened off the grub screw in the flywheel, which allowed me to rotate the flywheel and subsequently the eccentric to the correct position to make the engine work, hopefully. Whenever you set the timing on a model steam engine, you should always start off by making sure that the larger lobe of the eccentric is at 90 degrees to the crank pin. Then, once the engine runs, or doesn't run as the case may be, you can make minor adjustments to make it run sweetly. With the correct settings, the engine runs very well indeed. I'm quite surprised at this myself. And what is more surprising is, there is not a trace of a leak on the piston valve assemblies. With an old engine like this, it's a good idea to initially flood it with oil, run it for a short time, and then flood it with oil again, which will wash out any dirt particles from the mechanics. This is a piston valve engine, and piston valves wear out, whereas slide valves wear in, so to speak. And the piston valves on this engine are not worn at all. Quite amazing. This is the top plug of the displacement lubricator and there's nothing much left of the washer. It really is a very old engine after all. I turned it upside down and drained some water out and some very old looking oil. In place of the fibre washer that crumbled to nothing, I've fitted an o-ring temporarily. Yes, I'm quite amazed. You can clearly see here that there's nothing leaking from the piston valves. The only leak I can see is on the cylinder nearest to the camera where the crosshead guide fits the cylinder itself. I'll look into this in greater detail later. When I look closely at the engine, I can see that this engine used to be painted green, but I won't start talking about painting it just yet. Time for me to stop talking and just let you listen and watch the engine running. I've never really been into steam toys, but this is quite something. This is a bit more than a normal steam toy. This engine runs beautifully. I'm just refitting one of the cylinder end caps that I removed to see what was underneath it, and I was surprised to find that the cylinder end cover is held in place by three studs with three very small nuts on them. So it's looking quite good for the engine. It runs like a Swiss watch. That's a figure of speech. It doesn't run like a Swiss watch. It doesn't tell the time. I just mean to say that it is mechanically quite good. It has one problem, the eccentric strap tends to run into the bearing and lock up the engine, but that's an easy fix. As I mentioned earlier, I don't have much interest in the smaller steam toys, but I've learnt something here. I've learnt that certain things that are old and dirty and unloved and don't work properly are not always a bad thing. And thinking about it, I used to have a girlfriend like that, on that note, I'd just like to say thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.